I'd like to begin with a big idea. Could the power of touch be the answer to changing the current state of world peace? Let's see. I experience the power of touch every day, and it never seems like work. A day for me can be working with a traumatic brainstem injury, MS, a hyperactive child, a dog with a hip injury, a horse that won't take a jump. And then there are days like this. This was a longtime client who had developed a very different type of back pain than he had ever had before. And it did not respond to my treatment protocol, and I encouraged him to see his physician. And unfortunately, the back pain was stage four lung cancer that had metastasized to the spine and the cranial bones. And I had the wonderful opportunity of working with him for his remaining three years. The hand has the ability to be an extension of the heart, to give and to receive. Your hand is the chief organ for the sense of touch. <coughs> it allows us to interpret our environment, and it's placed at the end of this long, flexible arm, allowing us to communicate words, emotions, and ideas. And you'll see me use mine quite a bit today. When a friend shows you an unusual object, and you say, let me see it, what you really mean is let me touch it. Now, looking at our five senses here, do you have a favorite? And if you had to give one up, which one would you pick? Now, before you decide, if a child is born into the situation like the orphans of Romania, where social touch was denied due to lack of caregivers, the children developed psychological issues and were physically stunted. And this continued through their life. The only sense we can't live without is touch. It is the mother of all senses, being the first sensory system to develop in all animal species. And in a human embryo, it develops at about six to eight weeks. It's really our first language. The communications that we give and receive through touch are the core of human bonds. The need is hardwired into our nervous system. Without it, we are depressed, unhealthy, we do not thrive. A touch of a 40th of a second on your forearm makes you feel better. You see the giver as kinder and the environment as friendlier. It is our most social sense. It's the foundation for what we know as experience. Dr. Schomburg from Duke wrote, touch is 10 times stronger than any verbal or emotional contact. The communication that we transmit through touch is the most powerful means of establishing human relationships. Now, we usually think of our hands in regards to touch, but everything we do, sitting, walking, standing, hugging, kissing, feeling pain, relies on the sense of touch. Have you ever noticed how often you might rub your forehead or flick your hair or put your chin into your palm or rub your hands? Why do you think that is? Your nervous system requires it. We do self-calming mechanisms numerous times throughout our day because it slows our heart rate and it lowers our levels of cortisol. Your skin is actually your external nervous system. Touch regulates the brain and the body and it re regulates the body chemistry. Now, we all have our own laws of social contact. Think about this. Who and when is it that you touch? And where do you touch them? And who touches you? 
American culture says it's socially acceptable to touch a stranger from the shoulder to the hand. And touch like hand-holding, hugging, or kissing is typically reserved for much more meaningful relationships. We rarely touch or are touched throughout our day. What's your touch quota so far today? Can you think of more than two people lasting longer than 30 seconds? This touch quota varies widely by cultural differences. Interpersonal touch changes with age, gender, class, and cultural standards. Touch is such an important social interaction, yet the concept is rarely used in communication skills. Touch is known to affect bonding, reward, survival, and behavior. Let's look at how. This is fun. We used to think that touch served only to intensify communicated emotions. And we now know that it's much more differentiated than we'd ever imagined. The University of Illinois tracked physical contact between players during NBA games. And they found the more on-court touch earlier in the season, the more successful the teams were. And touch predicted performance across all NBA teams. It increases cooperation, and it's an indicator of strong bonds between people. Now with rewards, we looked at the service industry, and we found that customers who were touched by their servers increased their tips 14 to 17%. And when shopping, if people are touched by a store greeter, they buy more. And if they're asked later on, most often they don't even remember being touched. They just know they like that person. Touch is a biological need for survival across all cultures and species. The strongest evidence is from Duke. They theorize that the basic touch system is actually a primitive survival mechanism found in all mammals, and it applies to humans. Absence of a mother's touch for more than 45 minutes slows metabolism in a rat pup. And if it persists, their growth is stunted. <coughs> now, in monkeys, they found patterns of huddling together, hugging, and body clasping. And as they grew, their immune systems failed, and they were unable to reproduce. We know that touch deprivation in animals can lead to aggressive and violent behavior. So, could living in our touch-deprived Western culture have any negative consequences? Touch and behavior were examined in two very different cultures, Paris and Miami. They measured the affectionate touch between preschoolers on the playground then with their parents, and then they looked at their aggressive behavior. And as you can see from the chart, Paris is in gray, Miami is in black. There was definitely much more affectionate touch and very little aggression. The chemical and the cellular changes offer even more evidence to the power of touch. Let's hack into happy. Touch stimulates pressure receptors in the skin that send a quick message to the brain, and oxytocin is released. Now, that's a hormone that lowers our levels of cortisol, our stress hormone. And the brain interprets that as trust and positive attitude, happy. This is the main reason we build relationships. We're wired to receive support and problem solve across brains. Now, touch in the form of massage therapy increases serotonin and it regulates dopamine, which equals better memory, better learning, and it also has an antidepressant effect. The cellular changes are really cool. This is talking about our immunity. Dr. Fields looked at 20 children 
who were given daily massage by their parents, and within a month's time, the children's white blood cell counts increased, and the parents' depressed moods decreased. Touch is as good for the giver as it is for the receiver. She also found that the touch of massage therapy increases the activity of natural killer cells and lymphocytes in HIV patients and breast cancer. This whole complex surge of events is initiated by touch. It's important. Touch is critical, and it needs to be a greater part of our lives. So how can you use touch to change your life? The goal is to stimulate pressure receptors in the skin and the tissues. It doesn't matter if you're the toucher or the touchy. So hold your partner's hand whenever you can. A hug of only 20 seconds lowers your blood pressure. A pat on the back or a handshake is processed in the reward center of the brain. Think about getting a massage or massage your hands and feet. Body brush while in the shower on your legs, your arms, and your back. Yoga stretches the tissue. Go for a brisk walk. Go dancing, it's fun. Pet your dog or cat, it lowers your blood pressure. So we've seen how touch can decrease violence and depression, increase immunity and trusting bonds, strong team dynamics, increased economic gain. So now, I ask you, do you think touch can change world peace? I sure do. Thank you. <laughs>